First off, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for checking out the first video. The reception to it has been absolutely insane. It feels amazing to have worked on something so hard and for it to pay off. Thank you truly so much. I got a ton of comments telling me to do another video with more characters. At first, I was like, eh, maybe not. But after taking a look at the massive supporting cast, I think we have enough for a round two. Now, of course, it is impossible to get to every character and every outfit, so if I miss your favorite, just leave a comment and tell me why you like their drip. So, here it is, The Fashion of One Piece, part two. Time's up. I know who you're all here for. Obviously, Law has the best outfits out of all the supernovas. Now, from the waist down, he's not really changing things up a whole lot, but if I had those jeans with those boots, I'd be flaunting them 24-7 too. Of course, he's got to have the hat with the matching leopard print. Shout out on Oda for changing the brim. This original one was interesting, but I think this new one is way more versatile. Getting to my favorite, it's got to go to this fit from the movie Stampede. The recolor on the jeans matched perfectly with this yellow hoodie, not to mention the brown fur lining. Oda cooked so hard on this outfit. I wish I had it in real life. It's so amazing. Now the rest of the supernovas, hit or miss, mostly miss. Some like Hawkins and Rouge are still rocking the same mid look for the past two years. Beige has been wearing the same suit since his introduction. Props to X Drake on switching the hat, though I do think the original one fits his musketeer vibe better. Also, it looks way cuter on his dinosaur form. Bonnie switch hats as well, great move, this one's way better, but honestly I think she should be wearing different clothes given what's happening in the story right now. Stampede did the bare minimum and just gave everybody recolors, which is such a shame. I wish they got the same treatment that Law did. Apu was fortunate enough to get a new hat and clothes. The new pilot hat in this post time skip design is sick, and I also prefer the new gown to his old. The militaristic center buttons and the shoulder epaulets remind me a lot of Sgt. Pepper's uniform from the Beatles. Given Apu's music theming, I'd be hard pressed to say that's a coincidence. I'd say that the only post time skip downgrade has to go to Killer. Modern Killer has blue jeans and a t-shirt, it's pretty bland. Now check out pre time skip. Instead of playing with the blue of his helmet, we get this warm brown button down bars with yellow polka dots to match his long blonde hair. Also bars, what the fuck? But the pièce de résistance are these fucking chaps. What a statement piece. And all that without even mentioning the helmet itself, which is a design choice that I love in any character. Oda gutted killer in the time skip. The massive muscles and this stupid ass goatee sticking out from the bottom of his helmet is doing this man no favors. Killer was one of my like top 10 characters back in the day and this outfit right here is like the main reason why. Last but not least, useless Captain Mid. He didn't change a whole lot in the time skip, he mostly just got beefy like Killer and put on a shirt. But the biggest tragedy? The coat. It was a bold centerpiece. You got the red fur on the outside, red on the inside, spiked shoulder pieces that ties it all together with some golden jewelry. Add some steampunk goggles, add some red lipstick, and you got yourself an outfit that screams, I'm here to kick bubblegum and chew ass. Get to the time skip, and this beautiful coat is replaced by this pathetically bland fur cape. And this is a trend I've been noticing a whole lot lately. The further we get into One Piece, the more characters are just slinging things over their shoulders. It starts off subtly, but it feels like everyone is doing it now. I mean, look at these three. They're wearing their shit the same way. Kid and Law are even copying each other with the fuzzy collar. I think in moderation, it's okay, but personally, it feels like this design is getting overused. It's almost like Oda equates the coats to a character's power. Just the examples I needed. Big Mom style isn't the best, but given her figure, it's understandable. She's pretty much nailing the whole pirate granny vibe as intended. Now getting into Wano, this kimono is a notable improvement. The bright warm colors underneath this dark outer coat and her hairstyle like a geisha all works perfectly. It strikes the perfect balance between childlike whimsy and the chilling dread of Big Mom's presence. Diving into Shanks, Let's take a moment to appreciate this guy's pants game. Every time we see Shanks, he's donning a fresh pair that makes me wish I could just rip them right off of him. These flower pattern pants from this cover page, perfection. 
How about Formal Shanks? In One Piece Pirate Warriors 3, he and Ace get costumes inspired by the Strong World finale. Had to mention that movie somehow. Shanks in formal attire is a vibe. Those sunglasses and the puffer style shirt? Top notch. We're not done yet. Check out these skins from the mobile game Thousand Storm. Now I haven't played the game, okay? But give the designer a raise, man. I pray we get something like this in the main story, but I'm not holding my breath. From laid back pirate to what you really imagine a pirate looks like, let's talk about the outfit evolution of Blackbeard. Picture this. We first meet Teach and he's rocking the normie look, totally incognito, even on Whitebeard ship. But wait. The crew's expanding and suddenly he's wearing a captain's coat and some bling. Fast forward, Ace gets turned in, Teach becomes a warlord. So out goes the plain white shirt and in comes the regal red one. And now meeting expectations, the man's got a beard. But hold on, that's not his final form. Yonko status. Gaudy ruffled pants, a beard that's taken on a life of its own, a hat the size of his gut, and not just one coat, but two because why not? Oda is a genius for using Blackbeard's wardrobe as a visual timeline for his rise to ultimate villain status. The one who makes me the most mad about this whole coat thing is Kaido. We'll talk about him later, but the first big bad guy of the new world to defeat was Doflamingo, who wore this big feathery cape on his shoulders, and now the next big bad guy to defeat is wearing the same thing. I don't think it looks bad per se, but I mean, like, even Kid is wearing this. Kid and Dofi wore it first. Kaido, you gotta change, okay? Why don't you put on one of those shirts you love changing so much? Honestly, it's actually a really big surprise how often Kaido actually changes his shirts. Subconsciously, Oda has been planting this idea of coat equals power in our brain throughout the entire series, but what if I told you it goes way back? to chapter 9. That's right, Buggy was the first character to show us that coats on the shoulder means that you ain't somebody to mess with. This has persisted throughout Buggy's entire journey, culminating into him becoming an emperor where he didn't need a coat anymore. He became the coat. A fun thing Oda did early on was change Buggy's face paint in every appearance, and I really wish that he did that later on into the series. It kept Buggy's design really fresh. And going into Stampede, we get a glimpse as to what a post time skip buggy might actually look like. Baggy pants exuding the clownish vibes and a fluffier coat proudly displaying his power. Also, blonde buggy is something that I never knew I needed. Super cool. The whole coat thing is wild because even Luffy gets this treatment in Onigashima. The kid's a Yako now, look at him. Since I mentioned him earlier, let's talk Don Quixote Don Flamingo. I'm gonna be real with you, I don't like his getup. The dude's a former celestial dragon, you'd think he'd be dripped out in something regal, but he just looks like some run of the mill pirate, let alone these goofy ass capris, and don't get me started on these shoes. The only thing that seems expensive is that damn feather jacket. The one time I think his whole kit works is pre time skip where he's actually wearing the coat. It is far more interesting seeing a character actually wear a coat like this instead of just throwing it on his shoulders, especially in Doflamingo's first ever appearance. This shows that the older you get, the less drip you have because gaze upon 28 year old Dofi. It's pretty much just Sanji's Onigashima raid suit, but Bro, I ain't even mad about him not wearing the coat because it looks so baller paired with this suit. This is the king of the underworld. Not this. Now we have somebody who knows how to dress the part. Crocodile. I do think his original is kind of mid, specifically the colors. This orange shirt is a bit goofy to me. But once he escapes Impel down with everybody, ooh, monochrome with a touch of lime green in his scarf. This is it. This man is the boss. Crocodile's popping up in the story again, and given Oda's obsession with vibrant colors as of late, this shirt has me very worried we're gonna go back to the old orange, but only time will tell. And time has told. Uh, it's finally revealed in the anime, and wow, this light purple slash pink looks so bad. Not doing it for me. That being said, uh, Mihawk doesn't usually change, so actually getting a recolor of his like classic is nice. It, it looks really good. I actually really like the gold. Right now we're rocking with two out of three cross guild members. Hopefully, uh, Crocodile can catch up, but I don't think it's gonna happen, boys. Even in the flashback, Kuma isn't decked out in anything crazy. 
I do fuck with the bucket hat though, and I also like that his eyes are seemingly glasses. Gecko Moria definitely shopped at the Hot Topic next to the clown store. And Edward Weevil is Edward Weevil. Rounding out the Warlords, we have Boa Hancock. I think her attire, though egregious, blends with her thematically at least. She's royalty and her powers kind of require her to be sexy, so I get it, but to be honest, I like the dress she wore to Marineford better than the original with the open chest. It is the perfect example of less is more. It doesn't assault your eyes with fan service, and the skin that is shown works to accentuate her legs, which are her strongest weapons. Stampede toned down the cleavage, even a little bit is still a step towards progress. I stand for the desexualization of women in One Piece. Fuck. <laughs> The Revs have a pretty set style language throughout the entire organization, except for two members. Ivankov makes sense because he's not just a Rev, but the Queen of Kamabaka Kingdom. Being as flamboyant as he is, you'd think he would change more? I'm kinda disappointed, but he does rock the lace as both a man and a woman. Dragon on the other hand makes no damn sense why he ain't matching the rest of his army. Unless you take into account a little theory. You see, given Dragon's connection to Garp, the hero of the Marines, it'd be no surprise that at some point Dragon would have been enlisted. So picture a scenario where Dragon rose the ranks of the Marines all the way to the point of nearly becoming an admiral before leaving and starting the Revolutionary Army. Of course he would dress in a suit like the Admirals, but to contrast the Marines' white theming, he would wear black and wear a cape instead of the Marines' coat. Fun theory until you read the most recent chapters and you realize that the timeline doesn't match up, but fun theory nonetheless. In these said chapters, we get Dragon put in a militaristic button down, really channeling those commie vibes. With those two out of the way, the rest of the Revs are usually wearing more steampunk inspired clothes. Sabo's outfit is my favorite out of the Revs, and it's not just because he's wearing the coat, but that is 90% of it. A top hat isn't something that I usually like, but Sabo plays it so well. Even without the coat, he looks slick with the vest and button down combo, specifically on Baltigo, where the shirt is white. Even the bright cyan trench coat and stampede looks great on him, and I don't even like when these things are buttoned down all the way, so that's saying a lot. To match Sabo, we have Koala. Oda, please have them end up together. They are so cute. Keeping with the steampunk vibe, she's got the leather boots and the gloves, a second belt for some reason, and of course, the big goggles on top of the paperboy hat. All together, it is a fantastic getup. The skirt is way too short, but I guess that comes with the territory of post time skip One Piece. With Karasu, we get a coat, though, we can't really see his shoulders, so I don't know if he's actually wearing it or not. We have yet to give him a 10 out of 10 design. Lindbergh is the biggest example of the steampunk style clothes in the revs. I mean, the dude is literally inventing steam powered devices and he's got two pairs of goggles. Even though Morley is absolutely hideous and pretty much naked, this is kind of close to what I would want for Eva in being a revolutionary and an Okama. But even more hideous than that is Bello Betty. Where Hancock dresses in things that accentuates her body as a form of power, there is no damn reason for Bello Betty to be dressed like this. It's literally the flirting versus harassment meme. I can look past the bikini tops and the short skirts, but this is inexcusable. As the series has gone on, this kind of shit has gotten worse, and Bello Betty is just like the key example of it. It is such a pathetic, lazy excuse for a character, at least clothing-wise. Fan service as a whole is just a gross way of portraying a character, let alone women, which is such a shame because, like, One Piece has some of the best written women in all of manga, maybe even media as a whole, so, like, I, I just wish that Oda didn't insist on drawing them like this, but I don't think he's lost yet. I said in the first video, I think that the Marines uniforms are the best when we see a character alter it and make it theirs. <clears throat> and no one shows that more than Commander Hibari. I am bombed that she is so new and we've hardly seen her because this outfit is so good. She has a more youthful wardrobe, specifically in the baggy pants with the half leg missing. Also the accessories with the headphones and the backpack with the teddy bear charmed, which Go be gifted her, all while still donning the classic marine uniform shirt. It's such a good outfit, but oh my god, Vice Admiral Doll. I mean, the fact that she's wearing pants is enough, but the spiked bracelet and the necklace and the tattoos? 
Mommy? Even the female Marines that we've seen before are dressed perfectly. Hina in her suit or Tashigi with this amazing fur jacket are way more interesting than this or this or this. Enough gawking at ladies now, let's talk about some semen. Django and full body are always so damn casual and it blows my mind that this is allowed in the marine dress code. I love it. Marine t-shirt, marine button down, marine bucket hat? Speaking of hats, check out the brim on this guy. The story goes that Prince Groos as a child was very sad and always had his head facing towards the ground, causing him to bump into things all the time. And one day he bumped into the wrong crowd. So his mom fashioned him this fucking long ass visor. So he'd never bump into anything again. Once again, Oda's genius way of creating a backstory for a silly article of clothing. It's senior pink all over again, but way more wholesome. And of course I gotta mention, he's wearing his coat. 10 out of 10 character, boys. A simpler one is Kobe, dressed in the plain old marine uniform, but I'm not gonna knock it, I love the jacket. He's got a headband now, but in his wanted poster, you actually see him wearing the classic marine's hat, which honestly, I'd love to see that in the story. Physically weaker, but aesthetically stronger, Helmeppo's got some drip. After his training, we see a more serious, almost suave Helmeppo with his hair slicked back and this super bold visor. Waist up works wonderfully with all the layering. You go from brown to white to lime green, which is fucking complimentary to his purple pants, which is a throwback to his original design when he was first introduced to Omepo Cook. His post time skip ensemble is very reminiscent of Bogar, which I feel is no coincidence seeing how you can compare Kobe sticking to the classic marine uniform to garb sticking to the classic vice admiral suit this is such a smart illusion if this is what oda is actually doing lastly let's talk about the admirals Except for Fujitora, I don't really have much to say about him. Kizaru's bright yellow striped suit fits his personality so well, expressing himself but still strict to the rules of the Marines and the Admiral's legacy. Akainu was in the same boat until he was promoted to Fleet Admiral, now donning a white suit uh, in a white suit instead, which looks great with the red shirt underneath and the pink flower. Regalia that commands respect with a tinge of elegance. The baseball cap ruins it, but what are you gonna do? I didn't have much to say about Ryukyugu because he's just shirtless, but then I took a gander at those pants and come on, they are perfect. First off, they're leather, which plays with his whole badass persona, but then you get that green floral pattern up the leg. Not only that, but he's wearing a green shoe on his left foot to match the pattern. Come on, bro, so clean. Lastly, we see what an admiral would wear outside of the Marines and Aokiji's outfit is so cold. <laughs> in an attempt to make him look different, Oda just put Kuzan in a button down and vest, which kind of made him seem weaker or lower rank than the other two. Get this man out of the Marines and wow, this outfit goes so hard. It's got a simple base with a white v-neck and jeans, but then you got some really standout pieces. Circular sunglasses, a beanie, cowboy boots and this freaking coat tying it all together Mwah. it pains me to see what blackbeard has kuzan wearing because bro this outfit is so cool please clap okay i don't want the video to get too long so i'm just gonna start firing off characters i love perona's boots but i do prefer her pre-time skip design not to be a hypocrite but I like the skirt. Your honor, she's wearing leggings, it doesn't count. It's no fair that Law has his crew wear a uniform when he's never worn anything remotely close to it. Shame because I love the coveralls, I wish Law would wear something like this because his whole crew matching looks fantastic. Caesar Clown's gas coat is gas and oh my god, Odo, why did you make him hot? Why is he hot? Katakuri is a little too edgy for my liking, but I can see the allure. The biker vibe sure isn't something that I'd expect from Big Mom Pirates, it's more of a beast pirates thing. Speaking of, I love Who's Who and his open jacket. Another Toby Ropo member that I like is Ulti. Yeah, it's a short skirt, but the way it's high-waisted and tucked into this shirt, it looks cute to me. Roger's color coordination is impeccable. You got the pink shirt, orange pants, red coat, perfect. The suits in CP9, of course, go hard. Not a fan of CP0's white. Also not a fan of the fact that they're back. This specific shirt on Lucci, Daddy. All of Carrot's outfits are cute. I'm not a furry. Especially when she has this hat. I'm not a furry. Whole Cake Island's dress, the best. I am not a furry. Rayleigh looks like my dad. 
There's nothing to say, I just wanted to say that. And I can keep going on and on. Hell, I didn't even talk about the live action and how the production team would base the characters' outfits on early color spreads to freshen things up. Bro, it's so perfect. Thanks for joining me on this epic journey through the vibrant world of One Piece Drip. Whether it's a flashy pirate ensemble or a sleek government outfit, Oda's attention to detail is commendable even if he can get a bit stuck in his ways. As I said in the first video, what's peak manga without peak drip?